right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Brian Burke over in Cincinnati, Ohio. How are you doing, Brian? Hey, awesome. Brian the Mac <laughs> Man here, ready to talk about sales and how to make them pop. Yeah, absolutely. And um and Brian, uh, he has bought and so over $42 million worth in Apple products in your life, and he will buy your old Apple devices. So um, listen, Brian, um, sellyourmac.com is your business. Just give me, a, give me a bit of a background on where that business came from and, and where you got the idea for it and how you've been able to scale it. Sure. So, you know, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart, been buying and selling things at a very young age. But Apple products is really my passion. So when I was able to transition out of college and start my own business, buying some electronics, I quickly find myself uh, wanting to do work, more work with Apple. So I transitioned to be 100% focused on Apple. And then I realized I needed the inbound sales engine. And that's when I created sellyourmac.com. It's driven almost entirely on organic traffic. And we've worked our butts off creating a lot of uh, great SEO uh, through Mac guides and other content. So we're bringing all the people in that channel and we make it super fast, safe, and easy for people to upgrade their Apple products. You know, they can avoid all the hassles of going to other third-party sites and eBay mm -hmm. and Craigslist and stuff and just come right to us. So that's what we're trying to do to help people. Excellent. And, and so um, uh, how much was having deciding to focus on one thing and actually really go after the thing that you were passionate about? What difference does that make when you actually go to to sell and, and to try and build your business? How much does that get you through maybe the, the, the tough times? I think focus has helped. I mean, there's certainly, certainly uh, reasons why someone shouldn't focus and do more of a mm -hmm. broad range of products. You know, I ask people ask me all the time why I don't buy Samsung phones. And the issue is you can't be an expert in everything. You know, there's already thousands of Apple SKUs. I don't need to add another 100,000 SKUs of PC and Android I need to figure out. So our Apple focus has helped us over the years. It's a great niche. You know, fortunately, Apple itself is a very fast growing company, number one company in the world. So sticking along with them has been a good ride. Uh, everyone loves Apple products. So the experience is great. And that's something that really resonates with me. I want people to have an awesome experience. I don't want to sell them a device that I'm not passionate about. So I think my passion shines when I talk about Apple. And I'm also able to brand myself as the Mac man. And it'd be very hard to find that niche if I was doing everything. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And then, okay, so how did you then decide how you were going to make this a frictionless experience for customers? By frictionless, I'm always thinking about how to make the process just easier. And you know, recently we've added a serial number quote tool. So if you put your copy and paste your serial number in, it'll tell you all the specs and complete your process for you there. So you really need to know nothing about your device except how to find that serial number. Other things we do, we're trying to send boxes to our customers. So you know, we'll ship you a box uh, on us, pop it in there. It's super easy to pack up and send back. So everything we can do to make that experience easier is something that we're trying to help out our customers with. Yeah, and I think that's a key thing, I think, for people to to hear again, is that the fact is that you are looking for how you can make uh, this experience really, uh, you know, positive for your customers, because a lot of times, you know, companies get very focused on making processes work for them, as opposed to making the processes work for the customer. You have to experience from the customer point of view, you know, always thinking about if I was that customer, what would we want to happen? And you, you know, we're, we're losing money sending you a box, but we're mm -hmm. trying to make it a good experience. And if we don't offer that experience, people are going to try to sell it themselves or go on another, uh, another avenue. No, absolutely. I mean, I think it's, I think it's a, I, th I think it's a great idea and it's obviously critical in, in, uh, in differentiating yourself. Then, you know, tell me how you, uh, as you said, you said you did a lot of SEO work and everything and you got yourself and it's really been organic growth. I think sometimes people don't understand how much work goes into doing something, <laughs> doing something like that. Massive effort. Uh, you know, the competition is fiercer than ever. There's lots of companies doing what we do now. Uh, so last year, we actually increased our pages more than we ever have in history. We added 3,000 more pages of content. Wow. And we're, we're able to be number one or number two for almost every Mac search term out there on Google. And that drives thousands of hits per day. You know, if you search for sell my Mac or where to sell my Mac, we're number one in the world. And maintain that ranking is super important to us. And the only way to do it is really through content creation. 
Uh, you can't just uh, expect to be number one or just pay for ads. That's not going to get you there. Exactly. Um, but obviously, the important thing is that content has to be valuable content, high quality content or whatever, because I mean, there's a lot of people producing yep. noise. Yes, it's not fake content, you know, it's not written by robots or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're really helping. Uh, the main thing we're doing is describing what Apple products are out there. And that that helps drive a lot of searches. And then how, how, how critical to your success has been the branding of yourself? As you said, you know, you're the Mac man, you've got that groovy suit on there. Uh, how is that? Uh, and bow tie? Uh, how has that? Uh, oh, yeah. How has how has branding yourself made a difference? The branding's only been in the last couple of years that I've taken to this level with the blue suit. <laughs> um, it helps out a lot at conferences which I'm not going to at the moment. So hopefully get back to that soon. So then I thought I need to take it online and mm -hmm. really just by showing up all the time in this suit, sharing myself on videos and pictures, people now know me as either the Mac man or the blue suit guy. Right. And that's helped tremendously. And I, I have a lot of customers coming to me on LinkedIn, for example, that literally are just saying that I stand out. It's being unique and being yourself is that's differentiator. No, absolutely. Do you have a wardrobe like with 20 of those suits or something? If you open your wardrobe, would you just see blue suits? I have all blue everything. <laughs> I actually have four of these suits. Yeah. Uh, I need to make sure I had a bunch of them if I'm getting them dirty out at trade shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but my whole closet is blue. All my Sutter Mac gear, it's 100% blue and white. Yeah. But I think the, the, the key thing, but the key thing here, though, I think is OK, so uh, that you mentioned there is, uh, yes, you've you've you branded yourself, but you're being your authentic self. Right. I mean, this is yes. um, because if you're going to if you're going to brand yourself, if you're going to present something to the world, it has to be something that's authentic, because if you try to fake it, it's you, it it's going to come across. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can you can maybe fake it on a video here or there, but to show up with that passion every day. And I really lean into the word passion because if I'm not passionate about the products and how I want to show up for people, I won't be authentic. Uh, and that's why I continue to stick with Apple and this type of branding is something I truly love. Mm -hmm. So um, so tell me, like, how fast has your business grown over the last few years? Uh, I mean, we're over $10 million of revenue now. It's grown significantly. Um, you know, it's been an 11 year journey with SellerMac.com so far. So, you know, we've, we've gone from uh, one to 10. <laughs> yeah, which is amazing. And, uh, you know, because people always, uh, people love to, you know, they read about these, what they think are overnight success stories. Um, but most of these overnight success stories, as you said, I mean, yours is 11 years in the making, um, that yes. they don't realize all the work that, that goes in, that goes in behind it. I got a team of 20 people helping us out behind the scenes. Um, you know, the first I would say five or six years, I was working most nights till four or 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. And it really takes that kind of grind and perseverance and dedication to make it happen. And you, it, it goes to show, you know, all my other hobby businesses that I'm not spending much time on, they're not doing anything. So it, right. you really have to spend a, a ton of time and effort beyond what other people are willing to give. And the, uh, and the other thing, um, you know, as your, comp as, your, as your business grew, I mean, there obviously came a point in time when you had to decide, okay, um, I'm hiring people to do these things. Here are some things that I'm going to stop doing myself and I'm going to focus here. That's something that a lot yeah. of uh, entrepreneurs struggle with. It's, it's really hard to give up some of these things that you've done and maybe you love them, maybe you don't, but you're so used to doing it. Um, you know, I was used to waking up in the middle of the night to answer customer service emails. And I finally had to realize that was not the best use of my time and it wasn't sustainable. I wouldn't continue living healthily if I didn't get more sleep at night. So yeah, I do hand some of those things off in uh, you know, handing over our, all our sales and stuff like that. And it, it's, it helps free me up to do the things I am good at, which is most of the time uh, working on strategy and finding big opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so then when you're, when you're recruiting for sales, um, what, are you, what are you looking for today in, in somebody in sales? Customer experience. I want them to do everything they can to help our customer. We are the number one rated on Apple trade-in in the entire world. And it is our focus relentlessly on helping the customer going above and beyond uh, any negative review. We work, uh, we work so hard to turn around and uh, we don't let anyone be unhappy in that. Yeah. And I think that's such a, I think that's such a great point for people to hear because uh, 
you know, we live in this kind of referral world. We live in this testimonial world. Um, unfortunately, oh, yeah. as you said, <laughs> as as you said, I mean, it's an unfortunate reality of human nature is that, uh, you know, 10 happy customers, you might get one or two of them to post a, a review because they're happy and they forget about it. They go off on their way, yeah. happy with the experience and they forget to do it. Even when they commit to doing it, they forget to doing it. Exactly. The person who has the unhappy experience, boy, they're everywhere. They right? shout it out. <laughs> <laughs> and and so why, actually that's why we have a smile on our logo <laughs> we got a little oh, smile yeah. on SYM everyone leaves happy <laughs> yeah and so the point is there obviously like all the hard work you do to to turn those people around is I mean that obviously makes a big difference to your ratings it does and you know, even going above and beyond what normal expectations would be I mean sometimes people are complaining about stuff that's not even related to us mm -hmm. and we're still trying to help them out so <laughs> <laughs> just go go above and beyond is you know our motto and customer service and if more people do that they will have also have the best reviews no no absolutely i mean i i, I couldn't agree more and i think because i think at the end of the day you know when customers have issues i think the biggest thing is they want to be heard right and we've come off a time when when unfortunately um you know technology was used by many companies as a barrier, right? As a way of keeping you away from actually engaging with somebody from the company or whatever. In fact, trying to frustrate yep. you into just leaving them alone. We try to open up all the channels. You know, we want them to reach out to us on email on the phone and stuff like that. We're not trying to avoid hearing from our from our customers. And certainly when they need when you need help the most, you know, it's very frustrating on some of these uh, you know, larger companies that there's no customer service even available. No. No, no, no. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, even, you can't even pay for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know exactly. Is that they're they're basically saying, <laughs> no, they're basically saying, buy my product and then please leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, if you if you have a problem logging into you know Google or YouTube, who do you call? <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, so, um, uh, so then, how do you? Where do you go from here? Like, how do you sustain this and 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 grow this? Uh, on two sides of the business. So we have our individual side and the B2B side. On the individual side, continue to make it faster and easier for customers to trade in. As technology changes, we'll have to find new ways to continue to innovate there. And you know, one of the things we're going to do is we're probably going to do a, redo our entire quote app to make it even faster for the customer and just wow. easier to understand. On the B2B side, it's myself getting out there more, branding, branding and, and uh, showing myself to the world and continue to be known as the Mac man. I'll have more customers kind of flowing in naturally. And uh, also just maybe going after some of these businesses is that we're not, we don't have an outside force that's mm -hmm. trying to go after the purchasing opportunities. It's really mostly organic and on me on the company side. So I hope the, through more podcasts and more trade shows and uh, more branding opportunities, I get the word out there. No, absolutely. And I think, uh, I mean, obviously, everything is becoming more kind of disposable, if you like. I mean, it was once upon a time, do you remember when you buy, you buy a new product, and you would say, Okay, you know, I'm going to have this maybe for the next like three to five years or whatever. And now it's like, you know, Oh my now goodness. you get an iPhone next year, you get another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even looking at your, you know, you're thinking, oh my God, my 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 mm. Mac is really old. Like I've had it for two years now. Um, so, I mean, so I think we're in this kind of disposable world. So what you're doing here and making it really easy for us to recycle those kind of products is great. I appreciate that. I mean, Apple products have an incredibly long shelf life. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still, we're selling computers that are up to 10 years old. And maybe it's not right for someone like you that's doing, you know, video work, but it's, it's great for someone else that just needs to log on the internet and check their email. And maybe they're a high school or they're going to college and that's all they need. I mean, I think back to what I had at college, I had an iBook G4 and I, I graduated school with that. So you don't need everything to, you know, get, get through your classes. <laughs> No, absolutely. And that's why it's great, you know, that there's a way of, um, of, of recycling these. And, and like you said, then there's obviously this is going to become more of, a, of an issue for companies as they as they roll over devices and that at the same time. So, um, as you said, that's a great opportunity for you as well as to to go the B2B route. I think there's me a lot of upgrading happening in the immediate future. The new M1 out for the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, uh, you know, very enticing upgrade. A new iMac uh, was announced a couple of weeks ago, and that comes out in the next two weeks. And uh, from there, there's going to be a 14 and a 16 inch MacBook Pro coming out probably this fall, and just a whole new lineup of all their new M chip Macs. And that's going to be the biggest reason to upgrade, in my opinion. 
Excellent. Um, so what, what Mac and, are you on? <laughs> um, oh, I, I'd have to look that up right now. But I mean, I have a, I have a <laughs> MacBook um, Pro. Um, nice. It's actually fairly, it's probably about a year old, actually. So, um, nice. but really fast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. No, it's it's super fast. But you know what we're like, we're junkies for this kind of stuff. You know, if you, you showed me a faster one, I'd be like, oh, my God, mine's so slow. <laughs> it's only the comparison that makes our mind think that. Yeah. As soon as I jumped to this new M1 MacBook Pro that I'm talking to you on, my two-year-old MacBook Air, I was like, it took an extra one second. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How did you were thinking? How did I ever survive with this? It's ridiculous. I know it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So we want we want the latest and greatest, but all our stuff's still good. So I can help out people on both ends. Yeah. No, which is great. And then just in 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 conclusion. Um, what, what is your one piece of advice to other, you know, would be entrepreneurs? Like what, what, give me your one piece of advice that you would give to them. I would say showcase your passion. And if your passion shines, your product will also, your product or service will do well. If you have no passion behind it, it's not going to work out long-term and your energy is going to die off. We all have an internal battery and it just can't keep going unless you're passionate about what, about your work. So I think that's probably the most important thing. And secondly, I'd say you need pig headed discipline and determination. If you are not fully committed, it's not going to be even worth your time. You're not going to be, you're not going to make it past the one year mark. So find something you're passionate and committed to. Yeah, no, no, that's great advice. Uh, because uh, let's face it, nothing ever happens as quickly as you would like. And and certainly not as straightforwardly as you'd like. There's a lot of bands. You're, you're telling me, I wish I could just fast forward the business in our five, 10 years, but it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, listen, Brian, this, this has been great. All of Brian's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please tell us more about yourself. Well, I'd love everyone to connect with me on LinkedIn. That's where I share the most about my life and my business. I'm always sharing personal stuff about my family and really fun Apple news on there. So that's where I like to meet people. And uh, I hope people use sellyourmac.com and get money back for their old Apple devices sitting in their drawers and closets. Yeah, no, absolutely. After this, um, I'm going to go check and uh, see what we have lying around. We're going to sort through your closet here. We'll see what we can find, yeah. John. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you there's old iPads and stuff knocking around. Oh, um, I'd love to help. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thanks again, Brian. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you for another interview really soon. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.